It's time now for the political analysis of Fromm and Fuller. Al Fromm, former political advisor to President Bill Clinton, and Craig Fuller, former political advisor to both Presidents Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. Good morning, all. Al, I'd like to start with you this morning. Uh, a lot of eyes are on Pennsylvania. I think many Democrats were surprised that uh, uh, the Harris campaign is not making better inroads um, with such a strong local uh, governor uh, and Governor Shapiro, as well as the, uh, the grassroots appeal of uh, uh, Tim Walls. What's going on and what does the Harris campaign uh, need to do to win this thing? Well, first of all, uh, Pennsylvania is a very difficult state. It's very complicated because uh, you uh, there's the Philadelphia area. Uh, and then the middle of the state is sort of like Alabama or Mississippi, and then you go to Pittsburgh. Uh, and so it's a complicated state to begin with. It's a big state. We'll get into some details. Uh, but before, uh, I just want to have a couple of caveats for what I say, because I think this is important. One, uh, state polling is, is is unreliable. I mean, uh, so you really can't take very much from the state polls we've had so far. Most of them show almost a dead heat. I think three or four or four or five of the last polls I've seen in Pennsylvania have been actually a, an absolute dead heat. Mm. Uh, but uh, the samples are so small that when you go into the internals, you really don't can't figure out anything. They're all over the lot. Uh, the uh, the second caveat uh, is that we're not up there. And, uh, you know, we uh, live in an area where everybody knows how Maryland's going to vote, so nobody puts any ads on. But if you were in Pennsylvania, you probably... Uh, you know, couldn't go to to uh, to get a cup of coffee or a coke during the football game without being hammered by about four thousand uh, ads from both sides, and we don't see them. We don't really know what the messages are. I tried to find out some of them, and I've got some idea of them, but not much. And the third thing that is important in analyzing it is. Uh, after the polling mistakes of 2016, some of the categories were changed for 2020, so it's hard to get a direct comparison. But with those caveats, uh, let me let me try, try to tell you what I think about Pennsylvania. Uh, about a third of the uh, uh, of the vote in Pennsylvania is in Philadelphia and the suburbs in 2020. It's 11 percent in the city and 22 percent in the suburbs. That's the Democratic area. And uh, Harris is going to have to win pretty big there. Uh, the rest of the state, uh, northeast, central, and western Pennsylvania, all voted for Trump in 2020. Uh, basically, the pattern is that uh, the Democrat wins the cities, Pittsburgh, uh, Philadelphia, Harrisburg, the state capital, uh, the county with, uh, and I'm not sure the name of the county, but Penn State, uh, the big university, uh, and uh, uh, the Republican wins most everything else, and the battlegrounds are in the suburbs. There are two counties, Erie in the far northwest, and Northampton uh, on the east side of the state, suburban Philadelphia, which uh, Biden won in 2020 that Hillary lost, and that was probably a big part of the difference. But the big part of the difference also was that he did better among suburban voters. I'll get into that in a, uh, a second. Uh, the, the vote in Pennsylvania, and this is also why it's complicated in a national campaign, is much whiter. 81% of the electorate in Pennsylvania is white. In the country, it's 67%. Uh, blacks are only 10 percent. There are 12 or 13 in the country. Uh, Hispanics are only 6 percent, and there are 17, I think, or something like that in the country. Uh, uh, they're, they're older. Uh, 60 percent of the voters are over 45, uh, and there are considerably more non-college whites in Pennsylvania than in the country. And that Older 
non-college whites are basically the core of Trump's strength. So the demographics, uh, you know, when you ask why Harris isn't doing better, no Democrat's going to do a lot better. Shapiro had the advantage of running. Uh, I mean, he is a great candidate uh, and I think a superstar, but he also had the advantage of running against a very weak MAGA uh, uh, Republican candidate uh, with Trump not on the ballot to draw out the the MAGA vote. Uh, the the best analysis I could find of uh, of how Pennsylvania plays out is that <clears throat> I took a look at 2016 when Hillary lost by about a point, and 2018 when there were a couple of when Bob Casey won, and and just looked at the difference mm -hmm. uh, in a statewide race. Uh, and the key, uh, in, in 2016, uh, the Democrats also turned three, uh, or 2018, I'm sorry, they turned three House seats in suburban Philadelphia. The key were they had they made gains in the suburbs, and the suburban vote was much higher than it was in 2016, uh, and among highly educated voters, college educated voters. Biden continued that pattern, so that tells you something about what uh, what Harris has to do. Uh, but the other key, I think, is that uh, you know there are two th two ways to to win a state. One, you always want to get your the, get every vote you can out of your base and your and your core vote, but it's also to cut your losses in the other areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I sense. Uh, the Harris strategy is is to, uh, as she's become a much more moderate than, uh, you know, as Trump tries to make her a communist, she's trying to make herself a moderate. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> that's directed at the swing voters in the suburbs. But she's also working very hard to cut her losses in some of the places she's gone, her advertising campaigns, from what I can tell, in the rural areas. I mean, she just went on the air with a, a rural, uh, a radio campaign aimed at rural voters. So that's, uh, you know, that's what's going to happen. You know, that's the strategy. Whether it works or not, we'll see. But Pennsylvania, you know, you have a two or three point swing. The other thing that works for Harris is benefit fit this time is Trump uh, both times has gotten about 48.6 or 48.8% of the vote. So if she can consolidate the anti-Trump vote, she can win. In 2016, there was just enough uh, third party vote to uh, have Hillary fall a little short. Uh, in 2020, there was no third party vote to speak of, and it looks like there's not going to be much of a third party vote this time, so that should help as well. But it's get... going to be very close because it's a close state, it's a tough state, it's a tough state for Democrats, uh, and uh, Trump has uh, a demographic advantage in the state. Greg, let me get your, uh, your, your thoughts. It is kind of problematic as uh, uh, we've been hearing from Al. What... Well, I will, uh, spoiler alert, cut to the chase and say I, I have Pennsylvania in the Harris uh, column. I think, uh, I think she will win Pennsylvania. Now, I, I, I don't dispute what Al has said. I would add a couple things. One, um, you know, Democrats uh, have been uh, backed in every election uh, for president in Pennsylvania since 1992. Um, and, in, and it was Trump in 2016 that w was the exception and won. Um, I think the I think Al's point about the independent vote is very important because in you know in both cases in, Trump in 2016 got just over 48 percent of the vote, but 4.4 percent of the of the vote that year went to independents. That was 270 thousand voters, and in 2020 Trump got 48 point. 7% of the vote, but only 1.4% of the voters were, went, votes went to independents. It was a difference of 170,000 votes. So it, it's, um, tr Trump has not really improved his position that much over time. The other thing that I think is significant in, in, in a state that is going to be very close, to be sure, is this momentum factor I've talked about. And 
When you have a uh, Democratic governor, Josh Shapiro, who's won statewide, when you have, uh, well, his appeal could be limited to specific areas, but you have uh, Joe from Scranton, Biden, uh, as, the, as the president who has a following in, in Pennsylvania, uh, both campaigning all out to, to carry the state, it makes a big difference. And then, and then lastly, again, as Al pointed out, you have these population centers in Philadelphia and in Pittsburgh um, where turning out the vote is huge. And it was Obama that turned out the vote and won by a, a sizable margin. And I think by the time we get to November, between the social issues and the all-important economic issues, uh, Kamala Harris will have um, delivered messages that will resonate and will and will drive um, will drive voters out. And certainly, in this case, in those in those urban areas, the uh, the freedom issue of uh, whether it's freedom to choose or any other freedom uh, is is going to drive people out. So I I think. Um, Trump will have a hard time building a, a vote larger than what he's had in the past, and Harris has the ability to turn more voters out in the end uh, on Election Day. You know, uh, when I look at all this together uh, as these uh, polls continue to come out, Al, don't you think the Harris honeymoon is over? No. <laughs> I, I don't, actually. Uh, <clears throat> I think, excuse me. I think the honeymoon. Uh, uh, I hope it, uh, it 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 continues into a blissful marriage. Uh, but the uh, uh, I think the the first stage of the honeymoon, or uh, is probably over, which is uh, that she won back the Democratic base. I mean, Biden was so far behind, uh, in, including in Pennsylvania. Uh, because he wasn't getting uh, the Democratic base, uh, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, I saw a poll yesterday, not in Pennsylvania, but nationally, that uh, uh, John Delavope did at Harvard uh, on young voters, and and their start in the in the turnaround in young voters has been astonishing. Uh, and if the young voters come out. Uh, they were a big part of Biden's uh, win, but she's doing much better than he did among young voters. Uh, the uh, uh, so you know uh, I think she's gotten the Democratic uh, core base. Uh, uh, the black vote seems to be coming back, and um, my guess is by election day she'll do the same 92 to 7 that Hillary and Biden did in Pennsylvania. Uh, I think she's going to do well among Hispanics as well. So the Democratic core base, I think, will be fine, and of course the college-educated voters. But uh, uh, there's, a, there's another category of voters that uh, she has to, or that she, she that uh, that are in front of her, and I think she's now going to be making inroads into them, and I think we'll see her vote. You know, hopefully, anyway, from my perspective, she'll uh, we'll see her vote rise, and those are swing voters. They're they're some independents, some soft Republicans, who don't want to vote for Trump, but just have to be reassured about Harris, mm -hmm. and. You know, she hadn't had a lot of time to do that, but she's doing it now. I mean, I thought she gave an excellent speech yesterday on the economy. Uh, you know, you're going to have the nitpickers who want to know what the third figure in the 83rd page is and that she didn't emphasize it enough and all of that. But basically, a very good view of the economy from my perspective of, uh, you know, defining herself as a capitalist, uh, her ads in, uh, uh, you, you know, that uh, in addition to the rural ad, she's running the prosecutor ad in the, in the crime ad. In uh, in uh, in those suburban areas, uh, I think she's going after that vote, and you know I think it's going to come. So I don't think the the uh, uh, the honeymoon is over. The challenge for any Democrat against Trump 
is to consolidate the anti-Trump vote and get everybody who doesn't like Trump to actually vote for them. And uh, I think she's well on her way to doing that. Trump doesn't, you know, he's never gotten a majority of the vote in Pennsylvania, as he has not nationally. Uh, but, uh, you know, Harris no doubt had some convincing to do, and I, and I believe that she's done it. Or, or she's doing it, and that her so that her vote will continue to rise. Greg, you have the last word this week. So I I know what you're feeling, and 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 I sense a little bit of the same thing. But I don't I don't think that it's so much the honeymoon is over. Is I think the uh, you know the excitement when she entered the race as the candidate uh, was something that was never going to be able to be sustained across the country. Uh, it was simply you know an awakening for Democrats and a, for many of us Republicans who are concerned about Trump, a chance to pause and say, well, is this actually better? And many have concluded it is. Uh, so number one, I, it was never, it was, it was a, a bright light that couldn't, couldn't be that bright for, for that, that long. The other point, in, and this is what an important one Al made, and that is, no campaign has enough money. She has more money now, but no campaign has enough money to bring that intensity everywhere across the nation. And so in Maryland, we don't see the intensity. They do see it in Pennsylvania. They do see it in Michigan. They do see it in North Carolina. That's where the, the millions of dollars are being spent by the campaign and by their, the support groups that are out there. So it's a different it's a different feeling in that regard as well. I also think there's, you know, this is hard work, and these candidates are out there on the stump, um, you know, every day, and it's and it's hard work, and there, are, you know, days perhaps when she's a little more fatigued than others, and so it, it that although the the energy, the joy, the the fight is is seemingly in there every single day, I see her in in coverage. Um, there's probably some ups and downs. But I would say, in contrast, at the end of the day, this is a decision voters make between two people. And look at her opposition. Donald Trump, it's like he's discovered tariffs as the solution to everything. He seems to forget that most of the products we actually manufacture in this country, we sell to a worldwide market of consumers. And if you start slapping tariffs on everybody because they say something you know, ill towards you, or, or you, or you want to try to keep them out of the country, guess what? You know, he, he, doesn't, think, he doesn't think two months ahead when, the, when suddenly the retaliation would come and our own manufacturers would be closed out of markets. Uh, he doesn't think about how, what, if, tar if products come into this country with high tariffs, it's the consumer that's going to pay the cost, and so you're going to have inflation. So he is, he is following a path that can be severely criticized going forward. And that's when he's actually talking about an issue. Most of the time, he seems to be on one tirade after another. So I, I think, uh, in a sense, her, her competition is unraveling. She's becoming stronger uh, on, on, the, on the stump. I agree with Al about the speech. I thought that her economic speech was well thought out. She's delivering more content, more messages on policy. Uh, every day, and uh, that that will serve her well. So, you know, it remains a close race. It's a very divided country. It's going to be hard fought in a in a few of these states. I, I'll, I'll end where I've been in so many times before in the last few weeks, and I think we're going to be talking about it. You know, the week after the election, uh, it's about turnout, and if people are motivated by what Kamala Harris is saying, and they turn out, she wins. Uh, if Donald Trump continues on the path he's on. It's hard for me to see how all but the 30 plus percent of his hardcore supporters are really, really going to be for him. Well, we have to leave it there. Al Fromm, Craig Fuller, thank you so much indeed. We will see you next week.